Hello guys and welcome to Trying Physics aka Physics Bible. This video tutorial is to help you and to guide you on how to solve your practical problems under electricity in your NECO physics for this year. So quickly, this is the circuit we presumed might come out based on the white paper presented. NECO, unlike WAEC, love using all the materials they list out. Waek might decide to skip some, but Neko love using everything. So based on this, this is the circuit diagram. Please take note of this. The major thing here is for you to understand each component and how they are connected. If you look at this, we have our constant resistor. The value is 2 ohms. Now I'm going to give you a secret quickly. When you draw your graph, the slope of your graph depending on what you are asked to plot. If it is the value of R, which is equal to V over I against R, your value for your slope is meant to give you a, by approximation 2 ohms. With this, you are going to know or you realize that your practicals was very correct. Is that clear? So your ammeter is always connected in series. Take note of that. Your voltmeter is in parallel to the load. Alright? It might be across the 2 ohm resistor only, or it might be across both the 2 ohm resistor and the resistance box. This is your resistance box with an arrow. It means it is variable resistor. You can change the values. You can alter the values. Please take note of this. And your EMF, which is your battery, is 3 volts 1.5 plus 1.5 volts in series will give you 3 volts please make sure you cross check it using volt meter before you begin your practical measure the value before you begin so that you record the total value of your emf source before you begin your practical now i have an alternative question here if your circuit doesn't come in this format then you expect something like this this is 2012 neko all right look at it this is a simple a very simple circuit just your battery your ammeter your resistance box and your key all right look at it and then here you vary the resistors for two three four five six that is one two three four five six ohms exactly then you, they ask you to plot the graph of R on the vertical axis against I inverse on the horizontal. So either way, whichever way, just know how to use your apparatus correctly. Is that clear? So based on this, we are going to move to the next stage where I will explain to you the apparatus in real life. Then I will show you the readings taken during our own practical session then how your graph is going to look like i'm going to also show you that so please stick to the end watch this video and then subscribe for more tutorials for you to pass your practicals make sure you understand these components make sure you know how to take your readings on your ammeter then voltmeter then you see this resistance box you must understand it this work of voltmeter right it is always connected in parallel to the load please take note of this this is your resistance box can you see the values written on them we have 1 2 2 5 10 20 20 50 100 so the practical might be 1 to 5 or to 6 or 10 to 15 it depends on what Nico wants to give to you all right but you should know that using the resistance box once you remove the knob which some people might call the key. Immediately you remove it, it means you have introduced resistance in the circuit. If you replace it, it means there is no resistance. Please take note of that. Once you remove, resistance has been introduced. Replace, no resistance. I hope that is clear. Then this is the source of your EMF, which is your battery. 1.5 volt plus 1.5 volt in series to give you 3 volts. 
please use your volt meter to measure this before you begin your practicals and record the values exactly if it is three volt you write it if it is two point something you write it for them it is very important take note of that we now move to our ammeter the ammeter records current exactly this one reads from zero to one ampere so you are expected to take the readings immediately you are removing the knob on your resistance box as you are removing the values might be increasing or decreasing that is on your resistance box so as you increase the values on your resistance box what do you think will be happening to the ammeter it will be deflecting backward it will be reducing because the higher the resistance the lower the flow of current and the lower the resistance the higher the current from ohm's law you see that so please take note of this with this you even know if your readings are correct or not and take note of the polarity you are seeing plus sign and minus sign ammeter respects polarity voltmeter respects polarity then your emf source which is your battery also respects polarity so the positive must also be connected towards the same end if you connect them in the reverse direction your ammeter and voltmeter will deflect backward meaning you will not be able to carry out your practical if you see that happening it means the polarity of your battery the positive sign is now what you've changed to be negative so please change your connection immediately on your battery exactly then everything will deflect forward take note of that then we'll go to our constant value the constant value here is two ohms resistor it will be labeled as x take note of that now you can see two of them here it means each of these is one one ohm so if you connect them in series resistors in series you sum them up so one plus one will give you two ohms that's why you are seeing two resistor here so this is one ohm resistor and one ohm resistor you might be given a single resistor that bears two ohms use it exactly take note of that please now this is your key your key you use it in making or breaking the circuit take note of that now i'm going to give you a secret your slope the value of your slope might by approximation give you the value of the constant resistor used during the practicals the constant resistor is two ohms you are going to see it as i'm going to do it our slope whichever point you pick will give you by approximation two ohms if you do that and you're able to get that you know that your practical was very correct take note of this please this is a secret i'm giving to you for free if you do this you come out of your exam hall very happy because you know that what you've done is perfectly okay all right so how do you take your reading mainly your circuit has been well connected you connect your battery and everything you take your reading on both your ammeter and your voltmeter at the same time if you look at our voltmeter you can see it is deflecting our ammeter is also deflecting but the value here is very little due to the battery we are using so i'm going to change this battery and use a three volt battery this one is around one point something even though there are two which is why i'm asking you to take the initial reading so you can see what our voltmeter and ammeter are both recording okay so after changing the battery we are able to obtain the following readings look at our table below all right this brings us to the table of value this is how your table is meant to be your r in ohms your i in ampere your v in volts and then your p equals v over i which is the same thing as r in ohms all right then you repeat your practical let's say five times okay then your initial values when there was no resistance our i was 0 0.50 then our v when we recorded it was 2.30 all right then when we remove the one ohm resistor okay 
1 ohm, 2, 3, 4, and 5. When we remove the 1 ohm resistor, what was the result? The result gave us 0.40 and the voltmeter was 2.40. When it was 2.0, it was 0.35 and then voltmeter was 2.50. When we remove 3 ohm resistor, then our current was 0.30, our voltmeter was 2.60. Okay? Then when we removed 4 ohm resistor, our current became 0 0.25 and then our voltmeter was 2.62. Then for 5 ohm resistor, we had 0 0.3, 0. Point, sorry, 0 0.20 and then our voltmeter was 2.64. Exactly. Then for us to obtain P, we say V over I. Remember, it is not power. Power is IV. But this is V over I. And R is equal to V over I. So 2.30 divided by 0 0.50 will give us 4.6. Okay? Then 2.40 divided by 0 0.40 will give us what? 6.0. Then 2.50 divided by 0 0.35 will give us this value, which is um, 7.1. Okay? Please, if you are moving one decimal point, move with one decimal point. Exactly. 2.6 divided by 0 0.3 will give us 8.7. Then, 2.62 divided by 0 0.25 will give us 10.5. And then, 2.64 divided by 0 0.20 will give us 13.2. So we are going to plot P against R, P on the vertical axis and R on the horizontal axis. Let's now move to the graph so that you see how it's going to be drawn. Alright guys, welcome to the graph section. Now I'm going to be using 4 centimeters to represent my units both on the horizontal and vertical axis, 4 centimeters. Alright, so your graph will begin from zero. So using 4, 4 centimeters for the vertical axis, I have P in ohms against R also in ohms, right? You see, we're using everything, both the voltage, the current, and then the resistance. That's what it means because P is V over I. So on the horizontal axis, our resistance values varies from 1 to 4, 5. 6 okay depends tomorrow yours might be from maybe 10 to 15 or whatever please the procedures is still the same all the procedures are still the same exactly then on the vertical axis our p the values that correspond to this i'm going to still use two centimeters all right two centimeters to represent two units on the vertical axis then four centimeters to represent one unit on the horizontal axis i hope this is very clear to you uh one ohm resistor from the table gave us 6.0 so we have 6.0 then our two ohm resistor gave us 7.1 so we are going to trace it to 7.1 so these are 7.1 okay then our three ohm resistor give us 8.7 three ohm resistor 8.7 so these are 8.7 all right then our four ohm resistor give us 10.5 four ohms 10.5 can you see it yes then our five ohm resistor give us 13.2 so we have our 13.2 over here. All right. So this is our graph. Exactly. Let's draw our line of best fit. I'm going to show you. You can move this way or you can take them this way. All right. Can you see that? You can decide to do that. Or you can take it this way. Can you see it also? Yes. You can decide to use this. 
all right but only two falls into this line all right then you can decide to use this one can you see it i'm going to use this one all right so if i adjust this properly you will see that three of these are almost falling into the line or best fit exactly let's use this almost three all right i picked the outer one and i picked this one too exactly please whichever method you decide to use your slope must give you by approximation two ohms as we're going to see it from this graph so let's quickly so we are using this all right yes let's use this then if you observe you see my intercept is almost on two which is the value of my x the concealed resistor but that's not even the point i'm heading to it is your slope so we're going to pick random points i'm not going to pick 12. let's say i pick 11 and i pick um i pick 11 and i pick let's say eight all right so if we do that let's connect it then we'll have this all right so you see we have 11 and 6. so our slope now is changing p over changing r so that i have p2 negative p1 over what r2 negative r1 by substitution we have 11 negative 6 negative 6 divided by what do we have here 4 point what 4.25 negative what do we have here negative 2 11 minus 6 will give us 5 all right then 4.25 minus 2 will give us 2.25 if you divide this you see that by approximation our answer is 2.2 .2, which is approximately 2 ohms so this is giving us a constant resistor which is 2 ohms thank you please subscribe to our channel Connect to our social media handles at Physics Bible, the Triune Physics, for latest update. Thanks for joining us. Stay equipped. Stay liquid.